Hey everybody, it's Charlie from Daily Motor. Welcome to the live drive of the 2022 BMW 230i. For the next hour or so, we're gonna head out, take this thing for a drive, kind of talk about what's all new with it, compare it to the M240i that we had just a few weeks ago, and answer your chats and have some fun. So if you're in the chat already, I saw there's quite a few of you. We'll get to your chats here in a few minutes after a little bit of a walk around. But let us know if you're in and watching so we can say hello. Got Alyssa behind the camera. Unfortunately, no Nathan today, but that's probably a good thing because this thing's a little bit tight with three grown adults. <laughs> BMW 2 Series is kind of the coupe, smaller version of the 3 Series. The uh, interior is a little bit similar, but the driving dynamics and the styling is pretty unique. So it's kind of got its own setup, its own chassis, and it's a lot of fun, I gotta say. This one's packing the inline four, 255 horse, 290, I wanna say 95, maybe 96 so, pound feet of torque motor made it to the eight speed ZF automatic transmission. An absolutely excellent powertrain. I think BMW makes probably the best two liter turbo on the market. And it's actually a really good call for this car because it's lighter than the M240i and a little bit more playful. We'll talk about that a bit when we're on the road. Entirely new styling for the two series for 2022. It's a bit controversial. Some people don't really care for it. I, I think it's neat because it's different than pretty much any other car out on the, on the road. You're going to go buy it. You're not going to be confusing it for another BMW or any other brand. You're, you're going to know it's something unique. And in this bright gray paint, we're going to have to look at the name of the paint color, but it's, uh, it, it's, it's beautiful. I liked the purple on the M240i that we mm -hmm. had better. Mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't buy this color, but it is cool. Really? Yeah. I would buy this car for this color. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Okay. And the interior too. The that interior is, is neat. We'll and the that. interior is gorgeous in my opinion. Yeah. We do have a good amount of options on this car. It starts at about 36,000 or so. This one's specced out, I think it's about 47. More on that range, we'll have to look at the window sticker inside. But you've got the M Sport package, which is giving you M Sport wheels, M Sport brakes. Pretty much just a lot of different M badges on the car, even though this car is not an M car. Hmm. We're also running on winter tires, so we'll be able to slide it around a little bit more today. Let's go around this way a bit. Interesting design element of the new 2 Series, flat door handle pulls. So they're not the type that you can stick your hand in like pretty much every other car. You just have to reach up into, give it a little, uh, a little hello there and yank it open. <laughs> and the rear's got interesting styling as well with these tail lights. And later on, when we have the car flipped around, you might be able to see them differently, but it's, it's kind of a neat design. It's very simple back here, but it is. Yeah, it's I mean, just it's badge. very straightforward. It's mm -hmm. very, it's not flashy. I would say the angles are very modern and sleek. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, these are interesting too. And then coming on in, you can see the Oyster interior, the name of the color. They're kind of a, a black and just off white creamish sort of color. Cream would have been a, a nicer color name, but I don't mind Oyster. I think this is BMW's Sensatec fake leather. It still feels good. It's a nice seating surface. More M badges right there on the door sill. Oh, yeah. Why are there M badges everywhere if this is not an M car? <laughs> because M sells. People I will pay for so M. Irritated. But that's okay. Yes. Everybody say hi to Alyssa. All dressed up for. Business. Business. She is a businesswoman. Yes. Everyone congratulate Alyssa on becoming a licensed real estate appraiser. Mm -hmm. That's why she was not in for a few weeks ago, one of our live tries, because she was busy taking the test and you yeah. passed it. Taking the state exam. Yep. All done with that. All right. So Alyssa's never going to live drive us with us anymore because she'll be too busy with her own career. <laughs> Everyone say, bye, that Alyssa. True. That might not be true. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a look at the window sticker and you can let me know what we got in the chat so far before I get to this. Go ahead. Okay. So we have uh, Pittsburgh Man and Joshua Thomas. Hello, both of you guys. Glad to have you in, Pittsburgh Man. Hope, yes. hope school hasn't been, school and work beating you up too bad. William Long says, What's good, damn gang? And. Hello, Will. Obviously, it is not just me. I was a just very lightly. It's just Charlie and I today. Ah, yes. uh, Joshua John says hello. So does Xavier. Hello, Xavier. Uh, the Pittsburgh man is asking if you would prefer an A3 versus a 230 versus a CLA. Absolutely, the 230. So much more fun. I mean, you're talking about a real, 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 real drive car, real wheel drive platform. It's just 
this car is a super good balance of livability, efficiency, power, smoothness. It's all a really, really good package. We're gonna talk about that some more. Cool. But it also looks better than, than those other cars, I think. Nice. Oh my gosh. Kyle's in the chat. Hey, Kyle. <laughs> you know, Kyle, I was just thinking about you last week because we had the GMC Sierra 2500 HD with a 6.6 .6 liter uh, turbo diesel V8. And I was like, Kyle would like this V8. Yeah. Yeah. I I'm was beginning to think that Kyle was no longer with us. <laughs> he's he's here. He's, he's making his own content. I'm That's great. It, that is good. Yeah, yeah seeing, seeing his own content go up on his right. channel. Nathan is asking if the JBL system is worth it for the, the Tacoma. Uh, yeah. If you listen to a lot of music, I guess, I wouldn't pay that much for it because you're kind of going from a not great system to an okay system. So it's not like you're getting something fantastic anyway. For example, our Maverick has a not very good sound system in it, but even then, you get used to it. You kind of just turn up your music and you're like, yeah, this doesn't sound super great, but yeah. I'm still enjoying it. Yeah. Like, I just, I would rather save the money and, and I don't know. So if are I, you saying if, if you don't care about how much you have to spend? What I'm saying, I guess, is I wouldn't bother ponying up a, a good amount of extra change to get an audio system unless it's going to be fantastic. Okay. So if you're only ponying up to get a little bit better, I wouldn't bother. So in the case of the Tacoma, for me personally, I wouldn't. Okay, very cool. All right, um, the Pittsburgh man says, in my opinion, that's one of BMW's worst colors. The gray or the purple? Or this did he car, not say? I yeah. Know, I'm, I'm assuming it's the color of this car yeah. we have today. Yeah. Because uh, I said I liked it a lot. That color name is Brooklyn Gray Metallic. That's interesting. Doesn't scream Brooklyn at all to me. When's the last time you were in Brooklyn? It's also <laughs> a name. Yeah, that's yeah. fair. And then Oyster Vernasca, Vernasca Leather. So maybe this is the leather. I always get confused if Vernasca means it's fake or not. I think that's what they want. Yeah, I think that's the point. <laughs> For 40% uh, of the car's parts come from Germany, but it was finally assembled in Mexico. This is a Mexican-built BMW. Cool. Um, a couple of people are saying congrats. Thank hey. you. Um, and Xavier wants us to say happy birthday to his dog, Turbo, and Mac. I feel like his dog had a birthday within the last year, but happy birthday, Turbo and Mac. Maybe there are other dogs. Yeah, maybe happy he's got a lot of dogs. To the dogs. Uh, Michael sends a wave. Hello, Michael. William says he doesn't like or hate the looks, but honestly cool that BMW is offering this at all with how uh, Coupe sell these days. Exactly, and I agree with that because, yeah, you get the A-Class or you get the CLA and it's like, oh, you're getting an entry-level compact sedan. Okay, fine, great, but it's front-wheel drive or front-wheel drive bias typically. And I mean, good on BMW for sticking to their roots a little bit and putting out something like this that has some character and, and is unique in the marketplace, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you compare this almost to something like the two-liter Stinger and this is, is much more premium feeling and, and more fun. That's really cool. Yeah. Wow. Also say hello to Dawson Jensen. Hello, Dawson Jensen. Hello. Okay, cool. very good. All right. Looking at the window sticker, base price is 36 3500 but you're going to have to throw on some uh, some destination onto that. So $37,000 base price to get yourself into a 2 Series here in 2022. This one we're driving costs 49 but there's a lot of silly options. For example, that gray paint, 500 bucks. Wow. The interior, 1500 bucks. The M Sport differential that comes in the dynamic handling package is two grand. I would probably pay for that because I like to slide. The shadow line package is $850. That's gonna add some black accents around the probably the outside of the car. I wouldn't pay for that. The M Sport package, which gives you variable sport steering and a lot of M things, um, that's $3,250. This one also has M Sport package pro. So the M Sport Package and M Sport Package Pro. That's that red seatbelt. It's all a similar sort of idea to it. <laughs> right, exactly. Actually, this is quite confusing because it lists M Sport here, but also lists it there. But also lists M Sport Package Pro here, but 
It's giving you a sport transmission, apparently, the M Sport brakes with the red calipers, shadow line lights. It is throwing in the Harman Kardon sound system. I don't know why the Harman Kardon sound system comes with an M Sport package, but whatever. <laughs> More shadow line trims, literally extended shadow line trim. Wow. And a bunch of other silly things like this M steering wheel. A lot of other M's are on the car. All that is to say, um, that's a lot. Yeah, I don't, uh, that's, I would pretty much not get any of that M Sport crap, and I would just get the diff, and I'd be about $40,000 for a really fun BMW 230i. That's interesting. Uh, regarding the leather, uh, Pittsburgh Man says, Vernasca is real leather with artificial dye and finishes. Oh, interesting. Yeah, it, it feels good. I just, I would have thought it was fake, but I guess it could, it's, you know, yeah, whatever. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, they put like a dye coat on it to make it this color, I guess. Yeah, I wouldn't bother paying for it. Not no. in this car. Although it is nice. It is nice. Nathan asks if we will see the Ford Ranger with a B&O system. It's unlikely. I might be able to pull one from a dealer if I have the time and get around to it and remember to. Ford isn't pushing the Ranger much because the new one's going to be coming out. So I don't think ah. they have any press cars going out. Is a new one coming out in 20 this year or next yeah, year? Yeah, it's already been released in other markets, so it should be any time for US. Okay, great. Yeah. Okay. Do you know if that one comes with the B&O? It will. Okay. Yeah, cool. so we'll probably test that one. Cool. Very mm -hmm. nice. Yeah. Stay tuned for that one. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, Dawson says, I like the car, but I'm not the biggest fan of the taillights. Interesting. Okay. And then the Pittsburgh man says, yeah, the taillights for some reason look too Scion BRZ-ish. Huh. Well, we'll have to see them in some other lights and see if you all continue with that that sentiment so i think they're kind of neat but they are different I, right. I understand that they're bold let's fire it up okay william long has a great question which of those handling options are worth it do you think um do you think the m sport suspension setup is appropriate for public roads everyday kind of commuting yeah, it's good enough. Yeah, I think this the suspension's fine. It rides quite well, but I don't think it's gonna ride poorly with a normal suspension. I think that one's probably gonna be pretty good as well. The way I see it for a lot of these type of cars is buy it just as basic as as you can, save as much money, and then if you find that you're taking on the track a lot or something, you want to do something with suspension, go aftermarket. Get yourself an aftermarket set of springs and get them tuned exactly how you want them. Mm, that's neat. Yeah. Okay, cool. So I would get the differential because you can't exactly put a differential in a limited slip diff very easily. Get that from the factory. And other than that, I'd leave it basic. Do your own brake pads and things like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very cool. Neat. I'll do a little bit of pav. Yeah. They use this two liter turbo in so many different applications. And I will say it's it's a bit docile in this car. It's powerful. Once we get on out on the, the open roads, you'll see that it, it is quick. I would probably want to do some sort of exhaust on this car. I'm sure BMW makes a sport exhaust and I would, I would option that because it's really quiet without it. Mm. And it kind of sounds a little, a little um, sewing machine-ish, if you will. Yeah. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Lots of torque though, and the crazy thing, it makes that 300 pound feet of torque at as low as 1500 RPM. So even just coming away from the stop sign right now, I've got full torque if I want it. I mean, it's <laughs> it's quick and that turbo gets going real fast. Spread out my inner Mario. Yeah. <laughs> We should be getting some sort of charger here in the spring. Not sure what model it's going to be, but yes, we will be getting a charger. The other thing I like is look at all the tech. I mean, you're still getting this big, beautiful that is really neat. center display that can be customized a lot of different ways. You're still getting the big old uh, instrument cluster here. It, it's not like you're buying the base BMW coupe and feeling like you're getting gypped on any sort of the interior accoutrement. Wow. It's very nice in here. Okay, so PR332 says, no knock on this car, but it weighs 200 pounds more than my F30 sedan. Yeah, BMWs have gotten heavy and that's, it is a bit unfortunate with them is, 
between all the sound deadening and, and the technology oh, I see. It, and the safety things, it just, cars are getting heavy. I mean, I drove a Cayman GT4 RS last week and it weighed 3,200 some pounds. So cars are getting heavy, it's sad. Right. Mitchell says, I will never buy a front wheel drive based car again because traction uphill on switchback roads is very poor. Traction control cannot overcome gravity throwing the car's weight off of the front end. Yep. Yeah. That's very true. Interesting. So as we get up to speed here, we'll get up to 55 and you'll hear how quiet this thing is, even with the, the sunroof shade open. And we're on winter tires, keep that in mind as well. That's really cool. I like this. Yeah. I really do. Mm -hmm. AJ McIntyre is asking if you'd rather have a 228i Grand Coupe or a 230i, and oh, why? Definitely. I think the Grand Coupe's super ugly, and it doesn't drive nearly the same because again, front wheel drive based. Yeah, I did not care much for that Grand Coupe. Got it. And then you press Sport. You put it into Sport Plus or on the S mode. And you have some fun. Personally, I prefer the base. Holy smokes. <laughs> like that. We haven't done anything like that without any snow around. We haven't had many cars around that could do that. That's so cool. I want this car. Personally, I prefer the base gauge cluster over the full LCD setup. Really? Okay. Yeah, I guess I'd have to see that. It's been so long since I don't know if I've ever been in a newer base BMW. Mm. We may get a thing on the road. Let's see what happens. Chandler Harding is watching. Hey, Chandler. Yeah. Chandler, you should just buy one of these. Don't get a don't get a um a GTI. Get one of these instead. Wow, know, Charlie's saying price. don't get a GTI. Yeah, I don't, I don't Who like, is this person? I don't like the new GTI. Huh? Oh, get an old one then. Chandler has an old one. <laughs> That's why I said just keep the old one. It's a better car. He says. Uh, feel free to donate so Charlie doesn't have to hunt around in Eco Pro mode in this new BMW. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Earlier I had it in Eco Pro, but with the traction control off. Man. Mm -hmm. Kyle says this sounds like his grandma's terrain. Yeah, I, I feel that. That's why I said you'd have to get a sport exhaust on it. Huh. Hmm. Mm. Ah, Dawson has a good question. Okay. Is there anything you wanted to say? No, I was just going to say we might get a clean on ramp here we if might these get. cars can get their butts in gear. Right. Oh, yeah, I think we will. I don't see any turn signals. I don't see any turn signals. Dawson will ask that question after we do some more hooning.
nice rear wheel drive biased, sorry, rear wheel biased all wheel drive system. And it was good, but there's just something about the lightness and, and the carefreeness of just straight up rear wheel drive with a stability control that you can entirely defeat. I mean, this thing still just gets up and goes so quick. Even with being the slower powertrain. This makes me want to be like, I want this vehicle. I want this as like my, what kind of gas mileage does this get? We'll probably get like, it gets 35 on the highway. But oh I my gosh. But better than that in the real world because it's a BMW. That's awesome. You have to put premium fuel in it, unfortunately. Oh, whoa. Well, well, shoot. too much understeer on that one. The winter tires don't help with that. Yeah. <laughs> Off-road it? Yeah. <laughs> I say that because that's our off-roading loop right there. Yep. Melissa and I were doing some off-roading in the Maverick yesterday. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah, two yeah. days ago. No, it was yesterday. Alright, you got a question? Yeah, Dawson wants to know what is a good first car after graduating high school? Honda Accord. Yeah. More than or Civic. Yeah, that's precisely what uh, Pittsburgh man said. <laughs> Get a Civic or a Toyota. Yep. Yeah, pretty yep. much. Or you could get like a, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or a Miata if you don't need to do a lot of space, like if you have access to larger vehicles. Yeah. DSM QWERTY keyboard there was saying, I was thinking about getting a GTI, but then you gave Herman Kardon a C. Yeah, wasn't wasn't that fantastic in that right. car? Right. Yeah. Cool. Chandler says he's been considering a 340i Gran Turismo too, ah. with the M Sport trim and 19-inch wheels. That'd be cool. But GTI. Oh, hold on. GTI or GR86 makes more sense, but waiting for the Topher to let you do a highway fuel economy. Ah, yeah. That is the thing is, I can't remember if you got to put premium fuel in the GR86. I don't think you have to have to. You should if you're going to hone it, but I think if you're just going to daily it, you don't have to put premium in and that would help. Mm, got it. <laughs> I was scoffing at uh, premium fuel a little bit earlier, and uh, the Pittsburgh man says I could afford it. Little Miss Realtor. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Not Realtor. Not Realtor. Crazy. There is a difference. Yep. Yep. But it's fine. <laughs> uh, Chandler says test before I pull the trigger to verify it's a gas gu guzzler. Mm -hmm. Touche. Yeah, you got to put on a lot of miles out there in Idaho. Hmm. Kyle says he's get a Maverick and take the four out and put a five liter in it. <laughs> Maybe if Moran wants to uh, fund an adventure for us, we can we can engine swap our Maverick and put a five liter in there. Man, I don't think it would fit. I honestly don't, but Probably it'd be cool wouldn't. to see it happen. It, I feel like you could just get as much power by just turbocharging the heck out of the existing two liter or something. Got it. Dawson, it wouldn't sound as good. Sorry, Dawson says I've been looking at the Accords, but I'm a little picky on sound quality, which is great that you found this channel. Uh, um. A good first car with good sound quality. Uh, you Does know, it exist? Yeah, 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 you can get stuff. You know what I was, what I liked is um, I had an Infiniti M35 that had a pretty darn good sound system. I ended up only ranking it like a B, but it, it was strong. Okay. And that was only like six grand. And it's, it's a cool car, very cool car. It's not gonna be the most um, affordable gas mileage wise, right. but it's a, really, it's a really neat car. And you get the G as well. You could get an Infiniti G series. Um, I'll have to think on that some more. Some of the older Volvos would still have good sound systems as well. You could get an S60. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. All right. How about a Mark Levinson? Is that worth it in the IS350? Who, who asked that? Uh, DMS QWERTY. If you're talking about the brand new car, probably, I would say. Although the base Lexus systems don't seem to be too bad either. In fact, was it? No, I guess it wasn't. 
Yeah, it's it's tough because in the sedans, Mark Levinson's don't seem to be that fantastic, but in the SUVs, they're quite good. So that one, you might want to consider upgrading to that. All right, uh, the final legion asks, uh, does the four cylinder change anything in regards to handling compared to the six liter? Yeah. Or cylinder. This car is a little bit lighter on its feet, a little bit more playful. Everything feels a little less serious and a little more fun, and I appreciate that. In fact, we got to drive them back and back out, back to back out in California, and the M240i felt like you wanted to be flying down the Autobahn at a buck thirty. This felt like you could bring it into tighter corners and, and toss it around some more and have fun at a lower speed. That's what I've always appreciated about the 230 and 228i's over the 335 and 340, or sorry, the 235 and 240's, is this has a narrower tire, it's lighter, and in this case now, it's the only one that's rear-wheel drive. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, <laughs> William says, I'm curious what this would sound like if you, with the fake engine noise, fuse pulled. Have you found where it is? It'd probably be silent. Well, actually, we can drive it in eco mode, and it pretty much has the fake engine noise off at that point, so we'll okay. do that in a minute. Okay, cool. It, it, fake noise is everywhere, in yeah. every single car. That's pretty so much. disappointing. I don't like them. I wonder if our Maverick has fake noise. I don't know. I hear that turbo a lot. Yeah. Yeah. It, I, I don't think it does. Okay. I think that's the turbo genuinely making its own sound. That's kind of neat. Mm-hmm. Sounds so weird in a truck. Anyways. The Pittsburgh man says the bone bow system is pretty good in the G's and M's. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Nathan says his first car will be an 07 Accord with a four cylinder. Yeah. And Joshua John asks, is the Mercedes GLB worth buying? I've never driven a GLB. Or, it's one of the few first car, few cars in the new market I've never driven. Or is the Audi or BMW alternative better? Me personally, I would get the BMW the X1. Maybe an X2. The GLB is kind of cool, but I don't know. I've never driven one. Yeah, that's one that. That's another one that we people have ask time. for, and I've never, yeah, never yeah. gotten it. Yeah. yeah. Okay, just a few more, and then we'll go outside. Cool. Cool. Um, so now Nathan is asking, what's the best sound system under 40k? If does it exist? I don't think you can get a Volvo. For un, uh, with the Bowers and Wilkins for under 40, maybe a super base T5 S60, but I don't think you can option out the Bowers and Wilkins without that. This sound system is quite good, but you might have to pay over 40 to get the Harman Kardon. I'd have to take a look back at my list. The, honestly, the new Civic Bose is pretty good. Mm. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, DMS QWERTY, the color is called Brooklyn Gray Metallic. And Dawson says, um, that is why I also looked at the Civic with the Bose sound system, but I don't know how much, I don't know much about CVT transmissions and don't know if they're good, reliable or not. That Honda CVT is going to be fine, trust me. Honda's done a lot of research. It drives better than a lot of other CVTs, like Nissan CVTs, for example. And yeah, it's, I, I would trust it. Mm -hmm. Or just get a manual. You can get a, a hatchback, a manual sport touring, I'm quite sure. And mm -hmm. in, in, in you could get the uh, Bose with that. Or the SI. You can get the Civic SI. 27 grand. That's not bad. Yeah. Ford Guys is asking if we can crackle it and pop it and burn up the tires. Well, we've been working on burning up the tires. If we get to our donation goal, $20, we can definitely do a standing burnout. I'm cool with that. We've already cool. got two thanks to Pittsburgh Man. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. What's our can... donation goal then? 20 bucks. 20 bucks. Yep. Yeah. $20 or just $10 on the cash app. Great. All right, let, let's walk around. People are still yeah. asking questions, which is great. Yeah, we'll, we'll take a quick break, do a little walk around. Here's that Brooklyn Gray Metallic that we've been talking about. I genuinely love this color. Yeah, Alyssa thinks it's real neat. I've actually had nail polish this color as a kid. Really? <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful. Huh. I love it. It's not gray to me. It's like a soft baby sky blue. Oh. Yeah. I will say those red brake calipers kind of pop. They do. Against the color. It looks really neat. Yeah. I would probably want to turn this to be clear. I bet you in Germany it's clear. It's a US regulation that those have to be amber. Interesting. Mm hmm Yep. Here's the rear with the lights on. I don't oh, like them. Yeah, a little funky. Here, I'll give it a few revs. Okay. It does 
passed the Moran tests and that it's no soft limiter and it holds gears. Okay. So there's that. Cool. Another fun design element of the 230i, <gasps> pillarless doors. Ooh. Yeah, very classy. Neat. They'll probably be coming out with a convertible version of this here soon. I hope they do because the previous Gen 2 series had convertible. Right. Yeah. Pop the hood real quick. Take a look at that little four cylinder. Two under, or sorry, two liter in line four, making about 255 horsepower, almost 300 pound feet of torque. It's a variable uh, turbo, variable turbo size. What's that I don't know, various electronics getting ready to break. <laughs> Ticking away. Right. Cool. These air vents will actually open and close. So if, once you run the car hard for a bit, they'll open up. Nose nostrils. Nose nostrils. Nose nostrils. Yep. Neat. Yeah, let's drive around a little more and we'll, then after a bit, we'll put Alyssa behind the wheel. Cool. Get her impressions. We'll also do a quick back seat test. Oh, right this, now? I'll, yeah, might as well. That comes forward automatically. And then. As you can see, Alyssa can show real quick. I'm five foot ten. My head does hit pretty solidly. Yeah, you look incredibly uncomfortable. Yeah, I mean, I could be back here for five or ten minutes, but I wouldn't. I'd... You definitely want to sit in the middle, but you can't. You There's can't. no middle seat. <laughs> yeah, my knee room's okay. Okay, it's let's just, it's show just head everyone room. how that looks. Yeah. Wow, you do look squished though. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's kind of the the coupe life. Coupe. Coupe yeah, life. Take coupe. Alright, one annoyance I do have is if you're trying to make a lightweight, coupe, sporty type car, why does the sunshade need to be powered? That's just adding weight and complexity to something that doesn't need to have it. It's, it would be so easy to just reach up and go, zoop. There's Instead, like 200 extra pounds yeah. compared to the F30. Seriously, and that's a high weight too. So your center of gravity is really getting thrown off by mm. that. I would just rather not have a sunroof. <sighs> it's just chilly, it's just chilly. Okay, we'll drive it around a bit in Eco Pro and we'll compare the sound between Eco Pro and Sport for the fake engine noise. Cool. Got some comments. Yes, we do have comments. Cool. The Pittsburgh man says Honda has a pretty good CVT. The CVTs to avoid are. Yep. Fidget Club, who is actually Lucy, ah. says, Hi guys, I'm here. Hello, Lucy Fidget Club. <laughs> that's a Kia K5. That looks much better than the gray one we had. Yeah, hmm. that's, a, that's a neat. It's a cool car. Charcoal. Yeah. Mm hmm. Those are pretty good as well, those poses. Yeah. And he also says the uh, non turbo Mazda 3s have the same powertrain as the prior gen. Pretty tried and true. Uh huh. All right. I'm going to kind of take off here and just listen to how quiet the engine is in eco mode. <laughs> Barely that was hear insane. it. Yeah, yeah, that was very, very quiet. All right, we'll do a few, I'll have Alyssa hold it here-ish, and I'll do kind of a 30 to 30 mile per hour pull in eco mode and then compare it with sport. For daily driving, oh look, an idiot's stopping at the wrong. Why side. do they do that? The oh. truck is gonna plow right into them. <laughs> and it's pretty cancer. Yeah. 
But yeah, I'd rather just drive it around like this. With the sound on in sport mode or no, eco? Quiet. Wow. Eco mode. Yeah. Just like make it calm. But hey, I like EVs, so yeah. Right. Sounds. Yeah, EVs are awesome. Uh, do you remember the MRSP real quick? MSRP? 39 or 49. 49. Okay. And this car has a lot of bells and whistles with it too. Yep. A lot of extra packages. Joshua John says, hopefully Mercedes can get a GLV to Daily Motor to review at some point. Re they're really interested. makes me want is it makes me want to go buy a previous gen 230i with the manual neat the okay. bummer was is you couldn't get both the convertible and the manual in 230i form if you wanted a, a convertible manual you had to step up to the m240i hmm. gotcha okay so now nathan is asking do you think the civic hatchback system sound system different than the sedan. The hatch does not have a deck lid subwoofer. Yeah, it was pretty similar though. It was? Okay. Yeah, yeah Pittsburgh man, the back seats are for 5.5 five and under. Yeah. Yeah. Which is me! There you go. Yeah. a little chunky as well. That's pretty common in BMWs. Their heated wheels are a little chunky. I would prefer a thinner steering wheel. There you go. This is not all-wheel drive, correct? Nope. No. Rear. rear. Ford guy says turn off traction control. Well, it's it's partly off right now. It was on, um, what do you call it? Uh, the, the M dynamic mode, which I really like because it allows you to hang out at the rear end a little bit without getting you in too much trouble. That, that is nice. Curated. Yeah. Josh says, BMW, bust my wallet. Ha. <laughs> nice. Are you familiar with Thunderlight? Thunder Knight, the color? Yep, that's the one we had on the M240i. It's the purple. That's a purple, okay. Thunder Knight metallic. You do prefer that one to this? Yes. This color? Mm -hmm. Okay. There you go, Gallman. Ford guys is wondering if you're gonna test out the Mazda CX-5. Oh. Yeah. We've had a few CX-5s. I don't know if we'll get another one anytime soon. What we will get sometime later this year is the new CX-50. Yeah, rebranding their name. We'll do a little launch and monster real fast. No cops around. Seems pretty clear. Interestingly, when you're launching it, it shifts at about 5,800, even though the red line is about 6,500, so it short shifts Interesting. a bit. Interesting. Ah. William Long says, I second that. They'd probably be like 37 people who would buy it, though, sadly. <laughs> At the end of the day, the 230i is a hairdresser's car. What? Is that true? Well, because all the macho men who have to have all the horsepower are going to pony up for the M240i. Uh. And anyone who wants a cheaper, more tossable car is just going to get a Miata instead. So oh. the only people who are going to buy the 230i are uh, well-to-do women who want to look cool and hmm. don't care much about uh, the power. Hmm. No, it's sad. You said you. I just realized that. Heated steering? Very cool. Okay. 
Ford guys is asking if you can break the BMW by pulling a fuse. And I'm wondering if he's asking that in a way like, if you just pull one of the fuses, will that break the entire car? Because it's a BMW. Je ne sais pas. Okay. CX-50 is the new CX-5, if you will. Yeah. They're just adding a... Pretty similar. The pet's man says there's going to be cop cars soon in our mirrors. <laughs> but he uses emojis again, so it's kind of funny. Good. Okay. He also says, a oh, funny note, I saw a Stinger review on a whole different channel the other day. And in my head, I was like, I know those surround, I know those surrounding uh, WTH, but it was DM headquarters. On another channel? Uh, yeah. Oh, sometimes people steal our, our videos. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I did not know that. Yeah. It's like little random channels from other countries that uh, don't really have any subscribers, but they'll just pretty much download ours and upload their own version of it. I think he was trying to say, I know the surroundings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Huh. Sorry, I got really confused with that. Yeah, we might have to uh, take that one down. Thanks. Huh. Well, can't you just, um... Copy strike him? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's what you mean. Yep. Got it. Now Kyle's asking if the new Ranger that's coming out is going to offer a six-cylinder. you know at all. I don't know. I hope it does, but I could see Ford just going four-cylinder only with it. Joshua John is asking if the Toyota Camry or Avalon JBL is a good upgrade. I wasn't super impressed by the Camry or Avalon JBL. I heard it was supposed to be really good, but I didn't care for it too much. It still probably sounds better than the base system, though. Ready to drive? Oh, yeah. Okay. Do a little flipping and flopping, switching and swatching. Swapping. Swapping. Flipping, flopping, switching, swapping. Yeah. load myself up into the M badged passenger seat here. Look how tiny I am. <laughs> you are I feel like super low. I'm in mommy's big car <laughs> and I'm just playing around. <laughs> Jeez. Up she goes. How high will it go? Yeah, how for how real. will it go? Quite a bit it looks like. Also BMWs have thigh adjustments on their seats. It's very nice. That's actually nice. Yep. It's probably pushed all the way in already. Your short thighs. Blah, 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 blah. Can you get... Chandler says on the Ranger Raptor, it'll have a three liter V6 from the Bronco Raptor. Well, that's, uh, yeah, so maybe you'll have to step up to the Raptor to get the six. Uh, Alyssa's so tiny. <laughs> She's compact. Not subcompact, just compact. I'm mid size. Okay, let's see. Ooh. It's interesting having Alyssa drive sometimes because there are vehicles like the Palisade that you'd think she'd fit great in, but she did not, she couldn't get comfortable. So. I, I did not like that. I liked everything else about the Palisade how it felt on the inside from the passenger seat, the entire infotainment the gauge cluster this entire thing and i got in the in the driver's seat and i was just like i just do not feel comfortable yeah like this is it's either too high or too or too short or like i actually remember i was too close to the steering wheel and i genuinely needed that because i would not have uh, my feet would not reach otherwise and that was just i would not buy that car for that reason um that's one thing that surprises me with so many people that are willing to buy a car sight unseen from like something like Vroom or Carvana yeah. or, or online if you've never even sat in it. I know. I don't think I'd ever really want to do... Like, we are unique because we get so many different vehicles and I get to sit in so many different vehicles. So yeah. from based on that, I'd know. But um, 
if that were not the case, I would never buy a car from Carvana or Room or anything like that because I'd want to make sure I'm actually comfortable in it. Right. Yeah. I mean, at least like and how it drove and how it felt. You could at least go test drive one somewhere and then order one like on Carvana after that. But there you go. Yeah, yeah. that would be good. But yeah, the sight unseen kind of thing. Pittsburgh man says, no, it was a legit channel, assuming they paid, lol, Winding Road mag. Are you saying it was Winding Road that oh. had it? Because if that's the case, then yeah, we're, we're Winding Road, you silly goof. Um, do you have any electric car reviews coming soon or scheduled? We have a Hyundai plug-in hybrid right now, so it's not exactly electric, but it's close. And other than that, we've got a Mach-E GT Performance coming in the spring. We also have an I-Pace coming in the spring. That'll be a fun one, Jaguar I-Pace. Oh, that's Jaguar's electric. Yep. That's pretty cool. Other than that, I don't think so. We haven't had any EVs in a, in a minute. I love how the steering wheel feels. Like when you turn it, it feels like it's on ice. Like it's so smooth. I love that. Those companies have a seven day return policy usually. Also though. that, yeah. Oh yeah, that's true, but I, I, I guess I would just feel bad and that's just more hassle. Like, cause what if you were, like, <laughs> Alyssa didn't need seven days to find out she didn't sit comfortably in the Palisade. She needed all of 30 seconds. Yeah, yeah. Well, I guess it, it, you could just, I mean, if you're going through the hassle of buying a, a, a new vehicle or a used vehicle, uh, online or in person maybe it's something like okay maybe I need the full seven days to figure out can I get used to the, how the seat feels right. Joshua John that is a good point he asked how does the 2 Series compare to the equivalent BMW Z4 I wasn't a huge fan of the Z4 I think it, it feels a little too serious it wasn't playful and you'd think with being the convertible and everything I'd like it I don't know, I, for some reason I like the 2 Series better, but it would be interesting to drive them back to back and see if, if there's any real reason for that or if it's just my humanity showing through. I'd take a Boxster over a Z4. Maybe that's the reason I don't like the Z4 is because the Boxster exists. I drove a Z4 and a Boxster in the same week and I was just like, ugh, why would you have the Z4 when you could have a Boxster? You guys should drive the Ram Power Wagon or Ram 1500 5.7. I agree, Kyle. I would love to get a Ram. I love this vehicle. Yeah? I really like it. Nathan really, really liked it too. He was bummed he couldn't be on this live drive because really? he, you're like, what is this? What is that? Yeah. That's something new. Hmm. It's going to come around the same corner we're going around. Okay. I'll have to stake it out. I bet it's going over to the uh, ACM, American Center for Mobility. Ah. Uh, oh, Yas said we're looking sharp today. Oh, thank you, Yas. Hello. Stepping our game up. Well, Alyssa's liking the 2 Series. Nathan likes the 2 Series. I like the 2 Series. It's a good car. Should I go straight through that roundabout again? Um, let's go down the roundabout, down to the roundabout and to the right. Yeah, back okay. kind of the way we came. Okay. Because I know you want to keep an eye on that thing back there. Yeah, a little bit. Did you guys ever do the Hummer versus TRX? Unfortunately, it didn't work out, but we still might later this month, so stay tuned. Very cool. Oh, it's the new Kia Sportage, Chandler said. That makes sense. I thought I recognized it. Chandler, you got a good eye. Will you guys be doing a review on the 2002 WRX soon? We're asking, I, I told Subaru, as soon as they get one here in Detroit, we really want to review it. So we're just waiting at this point. Yeah, Dawson Jensen also said this is the new Kia Sportage. Cool. It is interesting looking. Oh no, it's going that way. Oh. It's, ah, uh, I don't know how that. <laughs> it's, it's almost Chinese looking. Ah, oh, interesting. It doesn't have the Kia badge in the front. No, probably because it's still a development vehicle. Uh, I don't want to really reveal that. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Pittsburgh man says next daily motor uh, car is a two series. Maybe if they come out with a convertible, we would consider that. Mm. For me, there's just as much as I like coupes, there's really not too much reason to have one unless you got a lot of money or you don't do a lot of things with your life and you just have another vehicle <laughs> the other thing is michigan roads are horrendous so yeah, like 
Alyssa driving around in the Maverick, she can go anywhere it's awesome. and just clamber over all the potholes. Yeah. You can go off road, on road, dirt roads, doesn't matter, it takes it. This, you'd have to dance around some of these streets. I am. Right. Like right here. That, yeah, that one would be okay. But uh, you can go around again if you'd like. Go in here? Either turn way, around. you can turn around here, you can follow the truck yeah, and go around the other way. Around. Dawson said, I would like one. They look awesome. Well, good. I'm glad, they I'm do. glad some of you like the, the new Sportage. Oh, those ones. That's it. You're yeah. Pittsburgh Man says, I think it looks pretty good, but I love Kias, so I'm biased. Well, it's good for you to recognize your bias. <laughs> I have to recognize my bias, and I'm not a huge fan of Kias, so I have to give it an extra grain of salt when I review them. You don't like Kias? Is that what you just said? Not really. They're one of my lower tier car brands. Interesting. Yeah, and it's subjective. It's not, I mean, they're doing everything great. They make great cars. Right. I just don't, it's little things. Like, I don't like the fonts they use. I don't like oh. their styling in general. I don't like the smell. I don't like the materials. But it's all personal. Interesting. That's very interesting. I would have not have guessed that about you because you are very much like you. are doing great things. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. Cool. Uh-oh. It sounds as though we've developed a rattle. It does sound like that. 714 miles in. Baby's first rattle. This doesn't really feel all that great right here. This is not a very... Yeah, you're nice. right. This is pretty cheap feeling. Yeah, it feels very, very... Just not luxury. Yeah, and inexpensive. Compared to everything else that's in here, I mean, the nice oyster colored leather seats and all that. <laughs> Josh John, what are the next car reviews for the next couple of weeks? Well, if you mean the ones that are coming out on the channel, we've got our Stinger review, we've got Sierra 1500 diesel, Sierra 2500 diesel, what else, uh, Kia K5 GT line, I think that's about it. We've got this, we've got the Tucson plug-in. On the 23rd of March, I'll have my Cayman GT4 RS video. That'll be up, it's embargoed until then. We've got a review, no, that already came out. Uh, I've got some motorcycle content coming. I did a little bit of uh, riding on a new bike that I got. And I don't think we have too many exciting cars coming up here soon. What are we driving? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, Kia Forte GT should be coming soon though, so Pittsburgh man would be excited about that. Got about another five minutes or so here, and then we'll get wrapping up. If you have any last questions or anything, let us know. If we get any, if we get another donation, we'll go out and do a launch from outside. Be fun. Other than that, any other new thoughts, Liz? Mm-mm. Just having fun? I'm just having fun. Good. I'm kind of fantasizing about what it would be like, what my life would be like if I like had this car. Yeah. Like it. Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> Definitely a different feeling from the passenger seat, though, from when you're driving, though, mm -hmm. right? Mm-hmm. I can't. Oh. Let's give you some sport mode. It's so loud. That's so loud compared to Eco. Right. Yeah. Can they hear it up from the outside? No. Wow, seriously. Yep, we're just all coming through the speakers. Oh. Huh. Michael A says, nice driving. Oh, thank you. Man, what's the next live drives? And are we live drives a week with the summer coming? Probably not, Pittsburgh Man, unfortunately. It's we enjoy doing it, don't get me wrong. I, I have fun. I know Alyssa and Nathan have fun. The problem is is we gotta focus on doing stuff that's making money and we love doing the live drives, but they don't, they don't they're we don't do them to make money. We appreciate the donations, we really do, and and that's I don't love like begging for money I don't want it to seem like the only reason we do these is to make money but I could spend this it's not only the hour that we're streaming it's the time setting it up it's the time leaving afterward and everything so let's say hour and a half two hours all in to do this I could spend that shooting and editing a video that's gonna make a lot more money in the long run than a live drive so will we do two sometimes maybe if we have exciting cars quite possibly will we kind of start doing more streaming at home maybe yeah there's a, there's a decent chance of that, but probably not going back to two live drives a week. It's right. just, it was a lot. And 
Fridays are really tough to live drive on because people got stuff going on. People do. Yeah. But we do love doing the live drives because it really gives us a genuine opportunity to connect with you guys. Right. To talk about what it is that you want to see with that particular car. We like hearing from you guys. Yes. We really do. And so that's a really great way to do that. I got to catch the light. <laughs> Almost. Uh, but the next live drives, I gotta look at the schedule. In fact, I got 15 hands here. Maybe I can check check our car schedule. What do we have coming up next week? Let's look. We've got a Grand Cherokee, another Jeep Grand Cherokee scheduled for next week. So we'll probably live drive that, and I don't have a second vehicle scheduled yet. So we'll have to figure out what we're gonna do, do for that one. Kyle, I would probably not let you drive this because you cannot see, and that would be dangerous. And also, you're not on the loan agreement, <laughs> so it would not be allowed. And Josh John asks, are you doing any adventure content like the last Chevy Colorado versus Snowmobile race in northern Michigan? That's fun. We, we, we do want to do more things like that. I'd rather devote time to doing kind of more fun things like that. Again, don't really make the same amount of money. I mean, if you watch <laughs> things like the Tesla versus Snowmobile, that doesn't make any money for us but it is fun to do so even though it takes more effort and has very little return it's it i do appreciate that you guys who actually watch the channel appreciate it and we like doing it it's fun um the other thing i want to do this year and i know i talked about this a year ago but we want to get into instrumented testing this year oh, so yes. we want to start getting official zero to 60 numbers 60 to zero those sort of performance figures on the channel so that's another thing i'd like to invest time into time and money all right we're gonna get wrapping up in just a oh, sec sure. so any last questions Oops. let me know and uh we'll wrap get a beat with it yeah overall really good car though i'm i'm happy with it I would say probably top 10 cars that uh, we've driven this year. I like this car a lot. Yeah. It is really nice. I haven't really, like, operated as if I was using it. <laughs> so I haven't really changed anything here or in the age cluster. I don't even, I don't even know what's in here. Yeah. But no. just from the driving aspect of it, I like that a, that a lot. Good. Back here again? Yeah. Sounds good. And BMW's iDrive system is great. The sound system in here is really quite good. It's Harman Kardon. A lot of good things going in that regard as well. Good turning radius. It has a great turning radius. Yeah. You're good for my job. <laughs> no. Looking to reverse? Nope. Park. Yeah. You, you want me to reverse? Yeah, reverse a little bit would be easier to walk around. Not coming up on the curb. Yeah. Got your backup camera. Pretty good. Cool. And off button. All right. Nice to done. Thank you. Mm -hmm. What does this look like? On? It's some space. Yeah. Got a USB C in there. That's nice. Mm hmm. Yeah, I like how they have a USB C there and a USB A up here. Yep. Not too many other surprises. Just kind of your, your glove box. A little bit of a door pocket action. Phone charger up here. Mm hmm. You do have nice. a wireless wireless device charger, which is good. That's not what you want. What did it get stuck? Pull up your credit cards. Oh. <laughs> Cool. Thanks for the live drive. Pittsburgh man says congrats again. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Let's go do a last walk around. Like I said, we'll be back next week with either Jeep Grand Cherokee or other mystery vehicle. Probably be the Grand Cherokee. I think that'll probably do well. It'll be fun to do. Can't remember if we live drove. I don't think we did live drive the last Grand Cherokee, so we'll probably do that. Okay. Yeah. Thank you all so much for watching, and we'll see you on the next one. We're Charlie and Alyssa with Daily Motor, and as always, drive on. Thanks, Kryptonics. <laughs>